In this video, we're going to describe the chain rule, do a few examples, and then prove this property for derivatives. So the chain rule um, is useful if you need to take the derivative of a composition of functions. Uh, by that, we mean um, a situation where we have a function inside of a function, or another way to think of it is a function of a function. Uh, so both of the examples above, h of x and y, are such examples. So we have cosine of 4x squared plus 1. So the function 4x squared plus 1 is inside the function cosine of x, or it's a function of a function. Um, and then uh, in our second example, we have y equals e to the 3x. And again, we have a little function, 3 times x, inside of another function, e to the something. Um, so these are two such examples where we would need to use the chain rule. So here is the chain rule. It says that if g is differentiable at x and f is differentiable at g of x equals a point c, then f of g of x is differentiable at c, and the derivative with respect to x of f of g of x is equal to the derivative of f evaluated at g of x times the derivative of g of x. Um, so when we take the derivative of f of g of x, we take the derivative of the outside function, we leave the inside function alone, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So let's see that applied uh, to two examples that we saw above. Uh, so for h of x equals cosine of 4x squared plus 1, that 4x squared plus 1 is our inside function. This is our g of x. And that cosine of x is our f of x. So cosine is our f. And so when we take the derivative, um, h prime of x is equal to derivative of the outside function. Derivative of cosine is negative sine of. And then we leave the inside function alone. So this is still just 4x squared plus 1. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function. We multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is derivative of 4x squared is 8x times 0. Uh, so it's just that. And if we want, we could rewrite that as uh, negative 8x sine of 4x squared plus 1. So that is our derivative, h prime of x. Uh, let's also do y equals e to the x and take that derivative. Um, so we've got that the e to the x is out, or sorry, the 3x is our inside function, and the e is our outside function. So this is our little f, um, e to the something, and our function g is uh, this. 3x, 3 times x is the function. And so um, our derivative, y prime, is then y prime equals the derivative of the outside function. Well, derivative of e to the something is just e to the something. So we leave the inside function alone and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Um, so the derivative of 3x is simply 3. And this uh, simplifies to just 3e to the 3x. So that is our derivative y prime. So in this video, we're going to prove the chain rule, and then we'll see more examples in the following videos. So here is our proof. Uh, so the derivative of g, f of g of x, the derivative of, uh, the derivative with respect to x of f of g of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of g of x plus h minus f of g of x, all divided by h. Uh, so that's just the definition of the derivative. Um, we're going to rewrite that again, and then we're going to multiply on the top and the bottom by the same thing. We're going to multiply by 1. So this is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of g of x plus h minus f of g of x, all divided by h. And now we're going to multiply on the top and the bottom 
by g of x plus h minus g of x over g of x plus h minus g of x. And again, we're just multiplying by 1, so that's totally valid. Um, now we're going to do some shuffling around. Um, we know that if we have, you know, um, a over b times c over d, um, we can move those denominators and numerators around as long as they stay on the top, stay on the bottom. So this is equal to a over d times c over b, um, and that's the kind of shuffle we're going to do right now. So this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of g of x plus h minus f of g of x divided by uh, the denominator over here, um, g of x plus h minus g of x, and then that's multiplied by g of x plus h uh, minus g of x divided by h. And now we're going to break up the limit. That's equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of g of x plus h minus f of g of x, all divided by g of x plus h minus g of x, um, multiplied by the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x, all over h. Now let's look at each of those pieces. Um, so this piece over here is quite clearly g prime of x. So that's g prime of x. Uh, we want to argue that this is uh, that this is f prime of g of x. Uh, let's see why that is the case. Now as h goes to 0, that means that g of x plus h goes towards g of x uh, because g is continuous, and we know g is continuous because it is differentiable. So that first limit we see above is equivalent to the limit as g of x plus h goes to g of x of f of g of x plus h minus f of g of x all divided by g of x plus h minus g of x. Um, now this is equivalent to a definition of the derivative. Um, this is the limit as x approaches c of f of g of x minus f of g of c all divided by x minus c. Um, so that's just a different way of writing uh, what we have right here. We're letting g of x plus h be our x and g of x be our c. And this is an equivalent definition of the derivative. So this is equivalent to uh, f prime of the inside function g of x x. So now we see that that first limit is equal to f prime of g of x. And so this entire limit above um, is equal to f prime of g of x, that first limit, times the second limit, which is g prime of x. And that is exactly what we wanted to show with the chain rule, that the derivative of, the derivative with respect to x of f of g of x is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x.